Ocarina of Time aligned perfectly with my childhood and resonates deeply with me because of it. It was a story about growing up and taking on the world, despite not being ready to do so at all. Link had the courage that I lacked, and if it were me, I probably would have never even got out of bed. If I knew what horrors awaited me on my adventure, I would have taken off running in the opposite direction. But what if Link didn't get out of bed? Now that may sound silly, as the rest of this video may end up being, but what if Link never left Kokiri Forest? Well, let's take a look. If Link never left Kokiri Forest, how would his life change? And how would this affect the events of Ocarina of Time? For starters, the Deku Tree would eventually pass away later that day. I mean, he's literally dying the day of. So whether or not Link got his grand call to adventure, he would fade from this world that evening. So if Link never woke up or knew to go visit him, or if Navi, for instance, suffered a concussion prior to getting to Link's house, the Great Deku Tree would have died without passing on his message to Link. Let's just assume for the sake of it that Navi was knocked out or died from the impact with the fence. Gruesome. It's a bit of a stretch, but then again, maybe it's not. I mean, a bird can unfortunately die from flying into a window, and Navi hit that fence pretty hard. Ouch. Without the knowledge from the Deku Tree, Link would never know about his role in this world until he got older and realized something was a bit off. He would continue to grow, and grow, and grow. Well, maybe not that much. If Navi wasn't informed of the greater plan prior to contacting Link, or if she splattered on the fence, then Link no longer had his call to action to leave the forest. Soon after the Deku Tree died, it would only make sense that Gandorf would return to the forest in secrecy, once again, to take the Spirit Stone. Because he's kind of a ninja, and no one saw him the first time, other than the Deku Tree. This once again falls into speculation though, but I suppose that's what this video is entirely about. All of this is assuming the Deku Tree doesn't have a slew of fairies he can contact in Navi's place before he died. But judging by his reaction when Navi showed up with Link, he may have not known something could have happened. So assuming he doesn't have like 50 fairies on speed dial, he's dead. And so is his knowledge. One could argue that Deku Tree Sprout would have informed Link of all this at some point after he sprouted. But he can only sprout if the curse on the Forest Temple is lifted. That curse may not exist at this point, but the curse of the Deku Tree was still in effect when he died. Because in this version of the timeline, Link never saved him. It may be possible that this curse would have killed not only the tree, but any seeds as well. If the tree was diseased and died, its condition could have affected the nearby soil if it was never cured, and potentially ruined the chance of future seeds growing. But that's enough about talking trees. Let's hop over to Gandorf's world now, which has become a scavenger hunt from hell. Now that Link is no longer collecting everything Gandorf needs, he now needs to get these objects himself. Why he didn't just take the spiritual stones by force in the first place is beyond me. But perhaps it was to avoid stirring up too much chaos in the land of Hyrule and losing the trust of the king. So assuming he was able to get all three stones, and that none of the stones were hidden by a fairy, Goron, or Zora in an effort to elude him, he now has another issue. The stones essentially do nothing without the Ocarina of Time, which by this point could have been hidden in the land of Hyrule, as Zelda preemptively fled due to word spreading about Ganon taking the spiritual stones by force. If by some miracle he finds the Ocarina of Time without his souped up Triforce steroids, he again gets kicked to the curb when he goes and tries to get his hands on the Master Sword to open the Sacred Realm. One of two things would happen at this point. Gandorf strolls in like he owns the place, grabs the sword, and nearly dies, or he somehow finds out that only one person in the world can pull the sword out. And he cries in the corner as his scavenger hunt starts all over again. 
Since the Master Sword can only be pulled out by the Hero of Time, and can never be touched by evil, he now has to hunt down the one person in this world who can pull out the sword. And that person is Link, who has no idea he can even do that. And neither does Ganondorf because he hasn't even heard of Link. So in short, if Link never left the forest or knew of his destiny, Gandorf essentially will spend the next couple decades trying to find everything that Link conveniently gathered for him, and trying to find the one person who can actually open the Sacred Realm. Assuming he doesn't get Zerg rushed by Hyrule's army for his exposed evil plans. And Link? Well, he's pretty much going to have nightmares forever, and grow up to be a freakishly tall guy in comparison to his peers. But because he has no perception of the outside world, he might not leave the forest at all, even when he is older because it is all he knows. So by deciding to be lazy, or just oblivious due to the events that occurred, he can make Gandorf's hunt for power a living hell. And he pretty much ensures Termina is doomed to be crushed by a giant moon. But I suppose that is entirely up to your perception of Majora's Mask, or if the Skull Kid would even rise to power without Link's influence. Some say Link even died at the start of Majora's Mask. For me, that would totally be enough reason to stay home in the first place. But again, all this is just a fun twist on a game that I truly love. But now that I've unloaded my thoughts on all of you, what are your thoughts? Is there any details I may have missed that could change the outcome of these events? Does Link become a drifter and wander the land? Does Ganondorf just give up his fetch quests and open an evil bakery? Is it pronounced Deku or Deku? I'd love to hear your crazy twists on this concept, so please share in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in for our trip to a bizarro Zelda timeline. If you'd like to join us on a YouTube voyage and help Ganondorf open the most evil bakery ever, then the subscribe button is just what you're looking for. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until our next video... Cheers. You've made it to the end of the video, but wait, your quest isn't over yet. There's more Zelda content coming your way. Perhaps you could lend your insight in our video about Redeads. Are they corpse or clay? Or perhaps you're a fan of that bird and bear duo, Banjo-Kazooie. I have a video about them too. Regardless, I hope you enjoy.